everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to night three of the 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Tonight we are going to layer three different colors on top of one another for a subtle tonal colorway. I love the way that layering uh, asymmetric layers of color on top of each other gives these soft different hints where you can see hues from the different amounts of colors mixing over the yarn and it's mwah, gorgeous. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. There's lots of videos coming out during this holiday season and you don't want to miss any of them. Let's go outside for a Chemnitz field trip to get into today's project. In my five gallon bucket I have pre-soaked our wool to die for platinum yarn in both fingering and DK weight overnight in just some plain tap water. And now I'm gonna remove, I'm not squeezing out all of the liquid, but I'm gonna remove the yarn because we're actually gonna use this pre soaked water as our dye bath today. And you may will see that I do have my favorite reusable nylon zip ties already on the yarn. They, these nylon zip ties do take up color. You can see uh, they started off as white and they have m multiple beautiful hues in them now. But I find it to be a really nice way to help keep all these 10 gram minis organized. But I also use them when I'm just dealing with 100 gram skeins of yarn because I can just pick it up by the zip tie and then things won't really get messed up. So now at this stage, my five gallon bucket is probably about half full of water. After a lot of internal debate over color, I decided to start off with some pink orchid. Um, I have a stock solution already made that isn't that old, and I'm not sure how much I of this I have. Um, we are going to be dyeing 125 10 gram skeins. So that's about like 12 and a half hundred gram skeins. And let's see how much of this we had. This was a 1% stock solution. And we have about 300 milliliters. So we have about three grams of this pink orchid dye. Now before we add that dye I just poured out, I do want to sort of clean out our stock bottle because it's just about empty and we may as well leave no dye behind as much as possible. I will need to rinse this further but that does give us a starting point. And now I'm going to add this 300 milliliters of our 1% stock solution. And since a 1% stock is one gram of dye, ooh that's really pretty pink. Since a 1% stock solution is one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid, uh, that means we have three grams of dye in here, and the dye is not very well dissolved. It's looking, it's doing that pearlescent thing that we see sometimes. So we will see how that goes. But I am going to stir this up. All of the tools and equipment I'm using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't used for the preparation of food. And now I want to come in with our yarn. So to the best of my ability, I've picked up all of our yarn and I am going to add it, look at that pink, to the bucket and sort of submerge it. There's no acid in here yet, which means that we're gonna have, but see if I open it, you can see there's still some white patches in there. There's gonna be differences in variation, especially if some color starts to strike pretty quickly. Um, but because there is no acid, we should be able to get more even coverage with the pink than we will with subsequent colors as we layer. This isn't going to be perfect because with uh, 125 10 gram mini skeins, I'm not going to be able to get really even distribution. But I also don't need that because we want there to be some subtle, subtle shifts and changes in color uh, throughout the project. So now I need to go get some acid. Now we always have the option of waiting in for a bit to let the colors absorb some, but I am here with 500 milliliters of white vinegar, 
when I'm adding that much acid, it could be easier to go for citric acid uh, than acetic acid, which is vinegar, but I'm gonna raise and lower to stir things up and distribute the acid over the yarn. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, I, I still like using white vinegar. I like being able to smell that it is present in my liquid, and I'm curious, Ooh, see, you can see some of those lighter tones. Maybe it looks like sunlight on camera, but I have a feeling, oh my gosh, that's almost clear already. Um, so that, remember how pink that was a little bit ago? Um, adding that acid has allowed this yarn to just really sh soak up that color, which is awesome and fun. Uh, so now I probably could go ahead and do the next color right now, given how little, there's only like a hint of pink left in here, but I am gonna go ahead and leave this outside overnight uh, so we can absorb the color and some heat from the sun um, on the top of this bucket will uh, allow us to get a little bit, it will allow it to set a little bit before we go ahead and do the next round. Or even if I let it sit in the shade, because <laughs> this is where I've decided to place it uh, really out of the way. Um, even if it's in the shade, then it will still get temperature from outside. And so there's no harm in letting it sit and wait. Because at the very end, we will go ahead and heat set all of the yarn. So that way the color is very, very well set. But now that we're in the shade, let's just peek in. It is not a pastel pink, but it is a medium pink right now. And so I still don't know exactly what direction I want to take it, but this layer right here is probably the most even layer of color that we will have. So you saw just how quickly this pink really absorbed into the yarn. It was not instantaneous, but as soon as I added the vinegar, all of a sudden there wasn't much color left in solution. It mostly just sort of was sucked up by the yarn. And some pigments bind to yarn just really fast. Others do take longer, uh, so this isn't necessarily an indication of how every color may behave. But you can imagine how if I had had that vinegar in with the dye at the beginning and then added the yarn, we wouldn't get as much pink all over and we would have had more contrast between the yarn that was towards the outside of that bundle and yarn that was a little bit more pressed up in the interior of the bundle. So I imagine as we go on, we will have some minis that have fairly low contrast and some that have much higher contrast between the colors. Now, as for the next colors, I still don't know exactly what direction I want to take it in. I am debating whether I want to go for a red on top of the pink, or if I want to go more blue and sort of bring this more into a purple family. One reason why I'm considering layering a red on top of the pink is that red acid dyes have different tones from pinks. So, so a, dil a red that has been diluted won't give as bright of a pink as what we had here. Oftentimes it gives a bit of a rosier pink. I mean, honestly, it depends on the red <laughs> a lot, but if the red is gonna strike a little bit quickly, then we could have pink and red like spots on this yarn after the next stage. And then we could layer with say a blue or maybe a deep color, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna have fun kind of evaluating the color at each stage and then deciding what I want to do after that. And to be honest, I am also considering the other colorways that I have planned for Hanukkah and how everything will fit in. So there are some directions I'm trying to not go <laughs> with this particular color, but I am very, very excited and I love doing multiple layers of tonal color. But the nice thing is that I'm planning on doing three steps of dyeing, but we could do four or five or six. If I add a color and I'm like, man, I wish we got more coverage of that, there's nothing that says you can't do it again. And so that's another reason why when you are playing with color, 
uh, you are done when you decide you're done because you can always tweak and play more. It is the next day and here is our pretty pink yarn. Now I do want to go ahead and remove it. Uh, so, and you can see actually that it got warm, the condensation on here. Um, I do want to remove it before we add our next color in. So what I'm going to do is similar to what I did before, and I'm going to take a couple skeins at a time, remove the liquid, and set them aside into a container. Uh -huh. And we can see here, we have a patch that is a lot lighter pink, some deeper pink. There's going to be a lot of variety because we have so much yarn in this five gallon bucket. If I was only dyeing, say even five or 600 grams of yarn, we would be able to have much more even uh, color coverage because there would the yarn would be able to move more in the water. But this is also why we are layering the color on in small steps. And when we do the next color, which is gonna be a red, Instead of having potentially white left, we will likely have some pinks and reds. Um, or, you know, if we get more coverage, then maybe it'll just be red. Either way, I am feeling really okay with. But this does look extremely clear. Yeah, I'm not seeing any color in there at all. So the color I want to add now is a 1% stock of poinsettia, which is a beautiful red. I only have about 225 milliliters of this 1% stock solution. I am gonna go ahead and rinse out this bottle like I did previously. Now, reds are, by definition, a lot more pigmented than their pink counterparts. You can see that even just from rinsing out the bottle, the color that we have in here feels as pigmented, if not maybe a little bit more than what our, um, our pink did. But I think what I want to do, and I have no idea how quickly this color will absorb, is I'm going to add about half of it. Now, this time we do have acid here in the pot already. But I thought that what I would do is gather all of the yarn, which will take me a minute. Okay, and I did not rearrange the zip ties or anything. And we, ooh, that is so pretty. We're gonna start adding this in. And I have no idea how quickly these colors are gonna strike. But I wanted to do this, I think, in stages in case a fair amount of color in there. I wanted to do this in stages to allow me to get a little bit more color coverage. So what I'm going to do now is let these drain for a minute. Not really wringing it out. And actually what's dripping off of them does not have a lot of color on it. Um, but I'm now going to take the rest of our approximately 2.25 grams of this red color and add that into the bucket. And now with the yarn, I am going to rearrange sort of how I have these and like pick up and flip things around just so that way we're going in in a slightly different way and this can allow us a little bit more and a little bit different kind of exposure of our yarn to the color and again ooh, this is so pretty this is so so pretty I am not sure what I'm gonna want to do for the third layer it's really gonna depend on how things look after all of this color binds. But I am curious to see, it is still fairly red, and so there is more pigment in there. And so what we're getting 
is, I'm gonna add this in. We're gonna get a lovely tonal that will have, so there will be some sections that'll be, have more of that pink from before. And I think we could have achieved an effect similar if we started with a tiny bit of the red and then did more red in a subsequent layer. But um, the poinsettia as a pink is a different tone than the pink orchid that we started with. So yeah, now we'll have to decide uh, what direction to go for the next color. If I wanna go deeper or if I wanna go, if I wanna do a deeper red, pink or if maybe I want to do a little bit of a blue to shift this into a warm purple. Um, but either way I am very excited and so I'm going to put on this lid and we will come back tomorrow. It is day three and here is our yarn. I'm going to pop on gloves just in case uh, so that way we could see this color. I actually really really like this color and it's gonna be hard to add another color on top. But I wanna do that, because that's the, the technique that we're doing today. But, oh, I love that red and the pink. I mean, I think that right, uh, right now, this is very, very much akin to the watermelon. I mean, I think these are two colors that I actually even mixed for my watermelon colorway. I can't tell right now if all of the red has absorbed, so I do have a skein of Knit Pick Stroll on hand that I will dunk in so that way we can get a sense of if we have used up all of the dye in here. But what I love is that we've got this, it still feels pink. It is a reddish pink currently, um, but we've got light pink patches versus white patches because we had that great pink coverage on that first layer. And so I don't know, yeah, I think you can see on camera. It can be hard to know as I'm filming sometimes if you, what shows up on camera versus what looks like a shadow. So we will see. I both want to increase the amount of pigmentation. Um, I think that some of the pecan brown and forest green that I did for Hanukkah night two was both what I wanted for that color, but also part of me wanted it to be more saturated and pigmented. So I really wanna make sure that my color tonight has a saturation level that I am really happy with and I don't go a little bit too light because I'm being cautious. Oh yeah, I'm not seeing like any color. I'm gonna leave this in here to soak and we'll go think more about the color. We are not even at a 1% depth of shade yet for our yarn. So I have a feeling that we still are in the medium toned category. This is not super, super saturated yet, which isn't a problem. I am still very happy with the color that we had last night for night two of Hanukkah, but the brown dried a lot lighter than I had been expecting given how pigmented it looked when wet. And I know things always do look lighter once they dry, but the amount of difference there really did surprise me. So I want to keep that in mind. And I do want to have something that is not entirely red based for our next step. And so here are the colors I am considering for layer three. We could go for another bright color with the frozen blue, uh, which would shift it a little bit more purple, but likely that red and pink would still have a fairly strong hold. Uh, we could go with black, which would be some beautiful contrast, but we'd probably lose some brightness. Midnight blue is not a color I have used much at all, but I like tone-wise where this blue is in comparison with our red pink we have so far. Royal purple would also be fun, but I do think I wanna go something that is more contrasty since the red and the pink that we started with are so similar and the differences that we got from layering those two are extremely subtle. An espresso bean, which I like the idea of using espresso bean, which is really more purple than brown, in my opinion. I like the idea of using that more than I like using the black, but I think 
I think I'm gonna go for Midnight Blue. The concern I have about using Midnight Blue is potentially overpowering this and making it too much of a cool toned purple, which in the grand scheme of things, I love purple. That wouldn't be a huge problem, but I do like some of those warm tone stain. And actually, if it goes too purple, like if it goes too blue, after I do the blue stage, I can add more red. I can go back, mix up more of that poinsettia dye and do a fourth layer. Uh, so again, you don't have to stop. <laughs> you can keep layering color again and again until you get one that you're happy with. So that is an option. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't want to do too much of the, so much of the blue that I feel like we can't come back for it. But the problem is that since I haven't really used this blue before, I don't have a good feel for a 1% depth of shade of this color. And therefore, that makes whatever I'm about to do riskier. So you know what? Instead of guessing, let's go ahead and mix some of this color up and dye 100 grams at a 1% depth of shade. And that skein of stroll I just stuck in the bucket is a great skein of yarn to use for this. I weighed out one gram of the Midnight Blue Acid Dye and then using hot tap water, dissolved it in an unspecified volume of water. I then added this blue dye to a stainless steel dye pot with around eight to 12 cups of water that already had a lot of vinegar in it and then added that skein of stroll. I then took the whole pot, put it onto my stove and turn on the heat until all of the color had absorbed. Setting this color up, I was struck by how purple it looked. And still it looks rather purple um, in solution, but on the yarn, it is quite blue. Um, maybe a tiny bit purple leaning versus green leaning, but very, very much a blue and it is fairly deep already, and we haven't come anywhere close to absorbing any of the dye, all the dye I mean, and it is still heating up. So I will come back once this has had a chance to heat up. First impressions of this color make me feel that I want to use anywhere from three to six grams of the dye on our 125 10 gram minis. Three to six grams of dye would give us approximately a quarter to a half percent depth of shade, which is half or a quarter as pigmented as the yarn that we have on the stove right now. My color mixing expertise is shown to get like a good true purple. Uh, you really do want to have like a pink and a blue when you have more deeper red and blue colors you end up with a much more muted color so i know that adding this blue will probably mute things out a little bit but i am curious how like berry pink versus purple this will feel once we have everything all combined and so uh that could be one reason why i might lean towards using a little bit less of the blue so then the total red and pink there's more of that than there is of our blue but ultimately it all depends on the relative intensity of these different pre-mixed colors so we will see i know i'm gonna love the color no matter what <laughs> Woo this blue this blue is pig Mented. I would say it is almost like if you took like extreme blue and some navy maybe and mixed it together. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful rich color and it did absorb completely fairly easily. It is definitely bluer than a navy. Uh, I feel like a pale navy would be dustier so this is going to have a little bit more brightness to it but still it's a dark blue versus a bright one. I am going to set this yarn aside to cool and then I'll go ahead and wash it off camera. So we will be toning down our pink which the color is not a good representation of what it is right now. I do still absolutely see some of the pink and then with the red on top of it it is very very pretty. Um, I'm just excited to see which color wins out. I measured out 
three grams of the Midnight Blue Acid Dye and dissolved it in warm tap water to bring back outside to our dye bath. I thought it was gonna be a rainy day and so we almost waited another day to do this. I'm gonna rinse off that spoon and then pour in our dye which is very well dissolved. I did bring some more water. There we go. All right, and now let's come in with our yarn, which will take me a minute to pick it all up. The dye bath that I made for, ooh, that's so pretty. The dye bath I made, and let's sort of rearrange this a little bit for our test skein. Um, oh, this is so pretty. Uh, that dye bath is had a similar concentration of acid as this one does. Um, and the color did not strike, like, slowly, but it did not strike absurdly quickly. But I'm now trying to will not go inside. I'm trying to like rearrange some of these zip ties to expose areas that maybe have less, that like maybe we're more trapped together. Like, well, I don't know. But what we've got, I've seen, as I spill, I see some beautiful, warm and cool tones in here uh, and I'm really happy with it. I'm curious how oh, most of the color, I guess I didn't check the color before I put the yarn back in, but I think a lot has sort of soaked up into the yarn already. And that's right, there is a lot less pigment here than we had before. So overall, yes, I would call this very berry very warm but we do have some more blue and blue purple hints it is beautiful so now I'm gonna leave this out for one to two days uh, let us absorb as much of that blue as we can and then we will go ahead and steam set the yarn Rebecca why are you gonna steam set the yarn if most likely all the color has absorbed after letting it sit overnight and the reason is that it doesn't hurt to add additional heat. It doesn't, and some pigments do a lot better with doing a more cool vat and absorbing over a long scale of time than others. Dyeing yarn is a reaction. When you combine your acid, your heat, your dye, and your yarn all together, then eventually the dye leaves the liquid and sort of attaches itself uh, to the yarn. And this can happen a lot faster when things are warm and a lot slower at lower temperatures. So in general, uh, you have a choice between your length of time and your temperature. But there are some pigments that definitely need that higher temperature in order to strike to the yarn. And then there's other types of dye that do perfectly fine at room temperature, um, like fiber reactive dyes on say t-shirts, you know, doing a tie-dye project, that's fine at room temperature, but you can also heat set it and then the process happens a bit faster. So you do have choices there. Um, but in general, I do recommend when you're doing cool that stuff, unless you know it's become really, really warm for an extended period of time, I recommend just giving it a little bit of a steam uh, just to make sure that those colors are well set. Let's take a look at our yarn. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So we've got beautiful, beautiful, I would say, ah, the sun makes it hard to see, but it's very warm purple. There's some more pink sections, and there are even some cooler toned purple areas as well. I would say I feel at least three different colors of purple. Um, and pink on here, which is really, really fun. And really has to do with because of the way we layered the colors. Okay, let's remove the rest. 
I'll give you guys a closer look at the yarn in a minute without this uh, dappled sunlight from our morning. And here is the last one. Now, before we go look at the yarn and steam, I want to check and see, and I don't think it's showing up very well on camera, but this water is looking incredibly clear to me. I'm not seeing any residual blues in there. Yeah, if I thought I detected even a hint of blue in this water, then I would pop a skein of yarn in there. Um, but I think that I may use this as a pre-soak for another project. Um, but otherwise, I don't think that there's any dye left in there that we could absorb. These colors are so, so pretty. And to some extent, I don't know how much of all these different tones is because we had both the red and pink in there. Certainly, I think without that pink in some of these areas, we may have seen more blue versus a very like bluish purple in those areas. I think that if it was more white versus pink, then that's what we would have seen. But we have oof, so many different hues in here and actually I'm gonna be really excited to see the if we see a range of colors in our minis themselves and that's because it's possible um, that we have some in here that are a lot more like red and pink some that have all three hues um, there could be some differences just based on where the yarn is in the skeins I do want to steam set the yarn so I have a pasta insert in this pot with a fair amount of water on the bottom. Now, <laughs> this is not as good a seal as the smaller steamer basket. So if you are gonna be using this um, for a while over the course of a day, uh, definitely, definitely make sure you check on that water level. Um, but I know that this should be fine for steaming for uh, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and I might wait, the only reason to wait a little bit longer is that with this much yarn in here, the pod is crowded. And so even with the steam, it's gonna take a little bit of time for the top to warm up. So even with a 30 minute steam, I will check and make sure that this yarn up here feels nice and warm. And then I might let it sit in the pot for a while with the heat off. Um, but anyway, I am going to let this heat for at least 30 minutes just to make sure the colors are all set well. The yarn got pretty hot after five minutes, so about 35 minutes total. And, oof, I mean, not expecting to see a huge change, but I am gonna go ahead and leave it in here a little longer. It'll stay hot and steamy and cool a little slower, but the heat is off, so we're not in any danger of burning the pot. And there's still plenty of water down there. <laughs> Extra checks, extra checks. But anyway, once the yarn is cooled, then we will wash it. Let's wash this yarn. I think this color is so much fun. Now, we could have done something like this in kettles on the stove top. It just would have been hard to do all of the yarn at once. I would have definitely needed to do multiple batches because I, none of, all this yarn wouldn't fit in a 12 quart pot. I do think I'm near, not at the limit, but near the limit of what I can fit into a five gallon bucket though. I just added some clear dish soap and well, that is what we love to see. There is no color bleeding. So I am going to rinse out um, all of this soap, wash the rest of the yarn off camera, put the yarn into my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. Here is all of our beautiful layered berry purple yarn. And the thing that's really fun looking at this is that unlike some of the other videos in this Hanukkah series, where I will be looking at how the colors vary within one bundle, which is 100 grams and approximately one skein. Today, all of this was dyed together. All of this is one dye lot. 
But because we had 1,250 grams of yarn in one five gallon bucket, we got a lot of variation from skein to skein within one bundle and within two different skeins in the pot. I mean, even looking here, you can see some that are a lot more of a tonal, this berry purple, some that are more blue, um, and then some that have some tiny patches of that original pink or then that layered red. It really does depend on where the skeins were when we added them to the pot. The midnight blue color is fantastic. I really, really like uh, the way that this color turned out. And I'm really happy that we use this for our layering today. This is a color I need to play with more. It is not a bright blue, but it isn't as dark as say indigo or navy. I think on camera, it's reading a little bit purple, but it doesn't really feel like there's much red in it at all to me. Yeah, I think some of that that made it seem a little bit more purple was probably because we had it laying on top of all of this very, very reddish purple yarn. But this is very much a blue. And before I go and start twisting, I figured I'd pick three different bundles, one that is a little bit more red, one that is a lot more blue and blue purple, and then another one that has sort of this bright patch here. So this is a very, very t fun technique, but really also highlights the amount of variation you can get, even with doing something more cool than that. Uh, and really, it comes down to the fact that the pot was so crowded, and so some of the yarn that was more towards the center had less access to each different color that we used. But if you want to do this kind of technique, to create yarn for say a sweater, I recommend separating things into batches. You can mix up your dye at first and then sort of measure it out right from the same mixing so that way nothing settles. But if you do it in separate batches, you can increase the ratio of yarn to water, which means that you can get more even coverage and have a little bit more consistency. But, oh, I love this so much. I do have a video on semi-solids versus tonals that talk about getting more even coverage of color and less that you can go check out. But one more thing you could do to get more even coverage is each time, instead of using that same dye bath that had acid in it, there would still be acid in the yarn, which you could rinse, but you can make a new dye bath each time and start with no acid to allow yourself to distribute the dye around the yarn a little bit more. But today I wanted to have this tonal with all these different hues. I didn't want the most even coverage, which is why I chose such a crowded bucket. Anyway, now I need to go twist all this up. Now that I have the minis twisted, you can see a bit more of the variation of color that we have here. So if these were full skeins, then the color might transition, it might be a little asymmetric, or it could be more balanced depending on how these were grouped together. But it's still fun to see how many different hues we ended up with here. It does feel like the DK, which is more towards the left of the screen, is more pigmented than the fingering weight. Just a little bit. Uh, and I'm pretty sure everything was fairly uh, randomly distributed throughout the bucket. So I'm not entirely sure why that would be the case, but this is probably one of the bigger uh, differences that I've seen between DK and fingering weight in all the videos I've filmed for the series thus far, which at this point has been five of the eight main Hanukkah videos. Anyway, there are so many variations that you can do on this and the final colors you get can be relatively soft and subtle and it's just so fun to layer colors and then see where we end up. Layering colors this way is a favorite technique of mine. I love to knit with colorways that have just subtle shifts in tone that are fairly randomly placed around the yarn. I find it really exciting to knit with it. It gives it a really wonderful depth of color. 
And now that I've started weaving, I want to weave with one of these kinds of colorways too. <laughs> What colors would you layer together? I know I picked that indigo blue for my third step, but I also think going for a brown would have been really exciting. So let me know color combinations I should try, and maybe those will show up in a Dye Foot Weekly episode going forward. It was really fun tonight to show my thought process because I knew I wanted to layer colors. I didn't really know where I wanted to end up. And so each time, each step, I sort of made up my mind of how much dye and what colors I wanted to use based on how the previous color looked, which was a really, really fun way to do it. Sometimes in videos I start off with a clear vision of where I want to go, and other times I make it up as I go along, and both approaches are good and valid and fun ways to dye yarn. If you love the yarn that I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for hand-dyed yarn that has been featured in my videos, which really I think makes the yarn extra unique because you can go and see exactly how I added the color to it as you are turning it in to something fantastic. What do you think is going to come up in Hanukkah night four? Stay tuned and meet me back here at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow night for night four of Hanukkah and we can celebrate all together. Thank you so much for watching.